at CIM Vancouver 2018, and joining me is Marcus De Paz uh, from Bombardier. Uh, thanks for taking the time. I know it's been a bit, a bit busy show, and uh, trying to trying to fit everybody into the schedule has been a bit tough. So thanks for taking the time to come over and sit with us and uh, talk a little bit about why uh, you're here. And uh, let let's start off a little bit about your your background um, and your involvement with Bombardier. Perfect. Thank you so much for the invitation. And um, I think. Introducing Bombardier um, in Canada, I think it's it's not <laughs> necessary. Ne it's, it's really not necessary. But if uh, the the viewers who are watching about what does uh, or why is Bombardier here in the CIM? So yes. Bombardier has a solution for underground mining, mm -hmm. and um, we have a, a partnership together with Schalke and NMT. NMT is a Canadian company, and Schalke is a German company which uh, produces the locomotives. And um, we, as Bombardier, uh, have the solution for the signaling. So this is the brain of the train. So this will make, uh, let's say, uh, gives you an automated mining solution, mm -hmm. driverless, where then you can have more safety in uh, difficult environments, uh, underground, or sometimes even in very far locations. Yeah, actually, um, and I, I've been kind of watching it from a distance. You've got a video that's been playing uh, at your booth. So kind of what we talked about doing is um, the audience now is not going to see it, but when in post, we're going to edit it around so they can watch what we watch. And we're just going to watch it. And, you know, we can stop it and go through it, and you can kind of explain a little bit about what each, are, what each uh, section of the video is showcasing and, and what Bombardier here is trying to promote. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think he's got it loaded up. I'm actually going to turn the sound down so we... So this is a... So you've you developed three... How long has this partnership been in place? Well, I think the first solution we did, and the one you see now on the on the video, this is the solution we did in, uh, in LKB in Sweden, in Kiruna. So um, this is a solution we, we did or more already around 10 to 15 years ago. And um, this has been the most, let's say, uh, the most successful uh, automated uh, driverless um, solution um, which other mines have been copying mm -hmm. and, uh, and or taking it as, a, as an example. As you see today here in the CIM, there are different uh, types of uh, transportation and um, each will fulfill the requirements of, of the mine. In this case, uh, it's a block caving uh, uh, mine where then you would require to extract uh, in the best cost possible. So our solution gives uh, you an option to, to reduce OPEX and on the long run that's what will make a mine more profitable. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think uh, that's our proven, uh, proven solution. Mm -hmm. that, uh, and it's and that's a continuous system, yes. right? Because it's all automated. And yes. I'm going to watch the next section here. This is about a three-minute video, so it's got quite a bit of information packed into one little. So yes, uh, that's the locomotives, and that's the uh, the unloading station. Mm -hmm. So the the train will not stop; um, will continually driving. Uh, much of the solutions you have today is where the the. The, the train will be stopping and then uh, the loading will be keeping each of the wagons. So then you will have a much more higher cost with your tires. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why continuously driving uh, and even the, when you are loading, you yeah. saw in the video, then uh, the train doesn't stop continuous driving. So that helps you also to, to reduce um, the, 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 that the tires are getting uh, braking all the time. Wear so and the friction. Wearing, and yes, yeah. the friction. So and then in the unloading uh, station, this will be unloaded from, from under. Yeah. So you, you've been in, uh, now this is getting implemented in several, uh, I'm seeing Chile here. Uh, and uh, some people, people involved in the mining industry uh, know of Chile, the, I mean, first class yes. when it comes to, uh, but I, I think some of our audience that maybe doesn't know a lot about the mining industry doesn't realize that Chile is a first class uh, nation when it comes to mine technology. So I, I see they've implemented two of these technologies in yep. in two different separate mines. So for example, in the case of Chile, when we implemented, we increased the capacity from 30,000 ton to more than 100,000. So that made then the mine more profitable and also be able to haul uh, the capacity they, they are requested. Yeah. We, uh, we've done a lot of interviews here and, and with all this sensory technology and that that's going into mining, 
there's there's more rejection of, of uh, materials that are not needed. Um, and if, but of course, that leaves that you still need, you have a mill of a certain size that still needs to, to run that yeah. material, that ore through. So this is that that um, that delivery system that is going to be able to match it when they're losing, they're losing stuff that, that they don't need that's low grade, but it's getting restored with these types of systems, which would basically be the goal. Yeah, because uh, when you have a surface mine, then uh, you will need to move the trucks around mm -hmm. and then you will have a mix of different materials. If you're doing block caving, you're going into directly where the, the ore is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go the and this Sweden. This is the uh, you said about the one in Sweden. Is this the the mine yes, here on this yes. video? So there you we are moving one hundred and ten uh, thousand ton per day, and then the one in Grasberg we will be moving one hundred sixty thousand ton per day. Now, when you say will be, is that is that being? This is now implemented, and this is how it will be looking like oh, uh, in a moment. Well. So you see, it's it's like having a, a a metro underground, but then it will be moving uh, ore, and then um, you will have different levels. I, I'm going to put that back again because that's really interesting. <laughs> so, so this is multi-layered, and it's got these almost conveyor systems that are coming in, feeding the train, and it's it's quite something. You know, we talk about. Uh, it, you know, we talk we talk about the technology that's going into into mm -hmm. the mining industry, and a lot of a lot of people, even people in the mining industry, don't realize how innovative and how in depth and how 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 much the mining industry is striving to push these new technologies. It's it's, it's I mean it's just this is an incredible system yeah. that they've yeah. developed. Yeah. But like you said, it took three partners to, well, to make and it it's happen. A, it's a Canadian company, so <laughs> <laughs> you say scalable. I, I noticed that it's uh, it's you know reliable. Uh, flexible, scalable. Mm -hmm. um, can you expand on that a little bit? Well, <laughs> if you can give me your pen, for of example, course. for example, uh, if you have a congested road, people uh, normally will say, "Okay, we will have to build more roads so that more cars can go." In the case of the trains, it's not necessary. You can have one, one only one rail, and then you will need, let's say, a station where you can mm -hmm. have a loop, mm -hmm. and then you will have only one tunnel for one rail. This maximizes your capex. Uh, Why would you have two when it's not necessary? And right. that's, the, that's the, the brain of the system. Right. So the system will manage how far would the trains go. And it's managing it, it itself. So this is a, it's a program. And then you will have a guy, someone sitting in a control center. And then he will be, depending how you're feeding, uh, feeding the system, mm -hmm. because maybe some loading stations are not full with material, and then you have to re redirect the train to another station. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's where you will be doing these calculations. Uh, so when you're talking about scale scalable, you're talking about scalable within yes. a, a, so the infrastructure already yes. in place. Yes, so you can be building up bit by bit. So maybe at the beginning, you only need three, four trains. Mm -hmm. And maybe after that, then you will increase the capacity. Yeah. Uh -huh. So then you will make it scalable. And then you can put them closer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so then, uh, depending how this, uh, in order, in order to avoid that the trains are all waiting on the unloading station just to lo unload, and then then you're also losing time. So you need to see how the trains are all the time moving. You you make it sound simple, but it is incredible. It's, it's, it it is, is incredible <laughs> technology. Yeah. Let me continue on watching this. Um. So then you see there is no no. Uh, that's the balises. So you will have on the wayside nothing. So no cabling. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you will have different options of telecommunication. It could be the LTE. Then you could use cameras. Right. And then you can uh, interconnect additional features like, I don't know, uh, detection of people wa walking around or you can mm, put more automation on, on this once you have a better telecommunication in the, in the mine. And it would depend on that mine's needs, their yes, setup, yes, their yeah, operation. I don't know if they want them to have driverless um, trucks or driverless uh, different kind of uh, equipment they would like to An have. An existing sensory yes, technology yes, that yes. they've got in the yeah. mine, yeah. So you see that's the unloading station and the train would be basically traveling uh, through. You know, that it, this thing, is, it's an easy thing to bypass because, again, it makes it look so easy. I've, I've been out to plants, um, agriculture, I where they're trying to unload and, I mean, I'm watching it stop, yes. turn. Yes. And these are big, multi-billion yes. dollar and plants. And can you imagine if one gets stuck and then you lose a uh, half day there, then what is that uh, for a loss for the, for the, for the, for the mine? Yeah. I have one of the wagons uh, in our boot, so the, I could show you how it works. For it's from under, how they bring it. Sure, like you can bring it over to yeah, here? Yeah, so, so if my, one of your colleagues could help me to bring it. Yes, exactly. 
Yeah. So you see, uh, when uh, when when let's say the ore is is, is on the on the uh, in the wagon, and then when you come in the oh, it goes like this. Oh, I didn't actually realize that. I thought it was. I was assuming like a no, shoot because it will be basically sustained like this, and then it goes back. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely incredible. And now, now if there is some, if there was, of course you try to avoid that. If there was any sort of issue, then all that. The, the brains of it then would, if there was any sort of hang up or anything, then it would come to a stop. It will stop and then you can move out the train that has an issue mm -hmm. and then it will go to a repair shop and then you continue the others, uh, the, the flow will continue. And that system is put in place so that it can be fairly easily removed so that they can link back. And yeah. then the system but then you have also uh, today with sensors and predictive maintenance, so right. if you can in have more automation, you will know exactly when you need to do certain kind of repairs so to avoid this kind of issues. Absolutely amazing. No, now I can see, yeah, okay, wow. Yeah, that's why I think it's better to have the model so this will help you to, to see. So 70%, and is that accurate? 70% is, that's well, a, that's a big Well, the thing claim. is when you have trucks in the mine, you will need uh, more ventilation, you will have diesel. In this case, it's, everything is electric. And braking distance, short. Mm -hmm. Well, there's not even as much braking in general. Yeah, well, th that's where I was explaining yes. the moving block. That means that um, depending how fast. So if you go faster, you will need more space. If you go right. slower, you can put trains much much closer. Right, and that's that consistency yeah. where you gain. Yeah. yeah, and that's the place where I was telling you where then you have one, 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 and yeah. then you will have a place where you can move different trains from different directions. Uh, yeah. So you don't need to have big tunneling. You c with one, one rail is enough. Mm -hmm. yeah, which is, I mean, we're talking millions and millions of dollars of yeah, infrastructure. Yeah, saving, savings you will do in... Yeah, yeah. I want to actually watch that one more time. So it's breaking distance, and then it's going to come into this... You see, then you have the two trains going in the different directions, but then you have a, a station or, or a loop where you will then... Um, Right, and because, th so, there's, so they're knowing that each other are there so far away that they're breaking so that less, less wear on everything, and by the time they go, it's, it's a smooth transition, exactly. very exactly. little friction, exactly. resistance. Exactly, and then the operator in the tr control center will know, and th this train will also know what is the speed, mm -hmm. because the other train is coming, yeah. mm -hmm. in order to avoid, sa uh, for safety, and uh, in order not to have an incident. You know, this is, I mean, this is incredibly high tech, and it's... You you see a lot of in it, you'll see a lot of media stories about the you know the, the internet uh, the the front end the the consumer version you very seldom get to see yep. these sort of stories so I, I think people will be fascinated by what's going on here it's it's amazing yeah that's it um. how long has this been on the market. Well, we have been uh, well. We have been in the market in transportation for many years. So yes. we are in metros and main lines. So I think uh, specifically for the mining, we yes. are more around around fifteen, twenty years into yeah. this. Yeah. And w where do you see it going? Is is this? I mean, you're talking several mines have it, have integrated into their systems. Um, the research we've done about about autonomous vehicles um, is is the integration is is the, one of the challenges. Um, how far out do you think we are? Are we 10 years out from seeing that that's how mines operate? How, how fast do you think the technology will start to get inter integrated? Well, uh, it's a quite high capital uh, investment, yes. um, but I think the future is going there. Um, when will that happen? Uh, I think it's more where different companies have to partner. Right. And you will be you will have to be flexible because not every, it's it's not, um, depending the commodity, depending, uh, there are different factors where will you have to, to build uh, the solution up to what uh, the requirements of the customer are. Right. So, so I think the future will be where more players are uh, integrating uh, a solution. It's not going to be only one player. Mm -hmm. So as you see, we are three different companies helping to integrate. You will have also additional players like electricity and uh, and then you will have some, uh, you have to integrate also the safety uh, features that will be interconnected mm -hmm. uh, so that everything is an automated solution. You cannot be putting them separate. 
it gets then more complicated. Right. Mm -hmm. Actually, we, uh, the uh, gentleman that we had a couple interviews ago, he was talking about that, the need for these partnerships and, and seeing these companies, you know, a, a, you know, a leading company like Bombardier partnering with other companies to make this technology. Um, and I was here, I, I've been to CIM you know, last several years and I have, especially in this show, I've noticed a big shift in an openness and a desire to to really integrate this technology from almost everybody I've talked to in a way that I just haven't seen before. So, um, you know, I, I want to thank you again, Marcus, for, for coming through. It's, it's, this kind of information is, is it, you know, I, I can't do a podcast and just talk about it because you need, you, you need experts and you need people that are willing to sit down and, and, and actually showcase what's happening. So I really do appreciate you coming and sit down with us. Yep. Thanks okay. for the invitation. Thank you. Yep. Good luck the rest yep. of the show. Thank you. Take care.